Let there be carnage. You big doo doo poo poo head meanie bug eye one eye be boo boo boo. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Venom Let There Be Carnage. And this entire script feels like it was written by a 10 year old. This film follows Tom Hardy's character Eddie Brock, once again living with the Venom symbiote and just kind of having a not great general time. And that argument lasts about two thirds of the movie. All the while, Cletus Cassidy, played by Woody Harrelson, thankfully got rid of the Sideshow Bob haircut. Stead has a weird mop flop on his head. He is a murderer. And that's it! And that's pretty much the majority of the character development we get with him. We know that he has a relationship with a Shriek-like character played by Naomi Harris, who I swear I thought that they put the same wig on her head that they did in Pirates of the Caribbean for her character in that movie. We know that he's a murderer, we don't even know who he killed, we don't know why he killed, we don't know what he did, we don't even know anything about it. If you hadn't read anything about this character from the comics, you were pretty much shit out of luck. They at one point try to kind of, very kind of, make you sympathize with him because he has this obsession with Eddie Brock for no reason. Cletus is just obsessed with him and you have no explanation as to why. And their very short and very poorly written dialogue scenes do nothing to justify it. This movie is entirely relying off of people who have read the Venom comics and the Carnage comics because this movie is barely over 90 minutes long. There has got to be somewhere between 30 minutes of footage on the editing floor. It feels like you are missing so much of this story. My wife even said to me that she felt like we were jumping in halfway through the story within the first five minutes. And all of the writing is made for cheap juvenile laughs. I am amazed that a lot of the dialogue got through a first draft. It's terrible. There is so many very childish, very poorly written sequences. It just begs the question as to why they thought this was a good idea, but at the same time, it now kind of justifies how Sony was with this movie. Sony delayed this movie over and over and over and over again. They were even going to delay it until like November, even next year, because they were worried about COVID box office numbers. I think the initial delays were because this movie sucked. <laughs> but it's also possible that maybe they interfere with it. Sony's known to do that. I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. Andy Serkis is the director of this movie, and while he has not exactly shown that he is a very, very, very good director, he is at least competent, it's just anyone could have directed this movie. Just because Andy Serkis is directing this doesn't change anything about it. It just feels wasted. That is the main conflict between Venom and Carnage. While you have barely any development about Cassidy, you have even less, near on zero development about who Carnage is. Absolutely none. And I feel that it's because it's relying off of people to know these things, and you can do that to a certain extent but not this. The first movie was certainly longer than this and spent more time developing bad villains. This could have done even more. But what about the action, I guess? Uh, it's all right. You still have kind of the same issues that the first one did where it's two characters that look kind of similar and they're fighting each other and it's really blurry and blah, 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 smashing into shit, which is cool, but you can definitely tell that they're holding back. This movie definitely feels like it has more than PG-13 content going on. Carnage should be an R-rated character alone. Within the first 20 minutes, I was already going <laughs> because I just knew the ride I was going to be going on. And then going back to the final fight scene, there is some decent fight bits in it. There's actually a pretty good joke. Again, juvenile, but actually pretty well placed. Anyone and everyone is going to care only about the post credit scene or the mid credit scene. Don't stick to the end of the credits. There's nothing there. But the mid credit scene, there's something that happens pretty much makes this movie just about as important as Ant-Man 2. I didn't like Ant-Man 2. Ant-Man 2 is very boring to me. There, there's another bombshell. Ooh. And I'm not even a big Venom fan. I know that there were some people who are going into this really jazzed about the Carnage inclusion and they walked out of this movie quite disappointed. They thought this movie wasn't good. In the end, it's a movie that feels like the bare minimum effort was done to make this a film. There's so much time wasted on useless 
ridiculous roundabout banter between Eddie and Venom about this same argument. The villain of this film has Neuron little to zero development that makes you anywhere interested in him other than the visual element that he's Carnage or just the fact that he's Carnage. So in the end, I'm going to give Venom Let There Be Carnage a 2 out of 7. I'm going to give compliments to the visual effects. There is some bits of the movie that are not completely wasted and the fact that it's short. That's probably one of the best aspects about it is that it's short. You don't feel like you wasted a lot of your time. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, leave a like. And if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time.